Welcome to the second issue of Angles. My name is Anne-Laure Fortin-Tournès and I am this issue's guest editor. This issue contains 13 contributions in various forms and media representing new approaches to the body performance experimentations. This issue means to explore new ways of representing the body, relying on its performing and performative capabilities. We'll see that as the material body seems to be receding in our digital cultures, many cultural artifacts combine somatization and semiotization, which allows for new nomadic forms of corporeality to appear. The first contribution by Lara de la Storiel analyzes the body as a prime agent in McCann's narrative plots. Semiotized by a text which it somatizes in turn, the moving body is not only a central theme but also a textual matrix in McCann's fiction, which engages the body in the literary process both as sense-making and sensitive entity. François Hugonier also makes a point about the importance of physicality to writing and literary creation. He shows that Paul Auster's novels are fueled by bodily failures and functions. Auster's breakthrough experience of a real contemporary dance performance he witnessed in 1978 actually changed his approach to language, style and literature in general. Alexandre Galopin and Natasha Grimaud's dance video clip, for its part, explores the possibilities for the dancing body to perform on its own and in relation to another body, in a peaceful natural setting according to a triptych-based pattern. In her short fictional piece of practice-led research, Elsa Cox introduces us to the spectral presence of a female body through the evocation of a silk bioscope dress so as to raise the key issue of the spectral presence in language of the material body. In The Brain Without the Body, Marion Roussel goes to the roots of the uncanny feeling we get when the frontier between the material and the immaterial or virtual body gets blurred. She bases her demonstration on Marcus Novak's experiments in digital architecture, his explorations of the insides of his own brain, for instance, which he externalizes and transforms into an immersive experience for the visitor. The impact of new technologies on the way we conceive of our bodies is analyzed further in Claire Lassonneur's contribution, which focuses on the dissolution of the boundaries between the material and the virtual in our digital age. In the next contribution, Charles Joseph chooses the cultural studies approach to explore the relation between real and virtual Los Angeles, so as to suggest that LA's urban sprawl is shaped by organic preoccupations. Sarah Atrell and Sylvain Bataille's video clip essay on the centrality of the body to acting in Lost insists on the importance of the actors' bodies to the series. The script was indeed written for the actors, and the characters they embody often had to evolve to fit the actors' own changing physical and personal characteristics. In the next contribution, Xavier Lemoyne shows how the big art group's Broke House uses queer performances and transgressive bodies to mediatize gender, racial, sexual and social questioning of traditional representational norms. The big art group, which deconstructs theater through queer cyber performances, blurs the line defining the normative bodies, subjectivities and technological performances. The one last piece in our issue about the body is Claire Hayes-Brady's investigation of the roles of objects 
in Jethro Eugenides, The Virgin Suicides, and Oran Pamuk's The Museum of Innocence, where the departed female body, remembered through a number of memorabilia by the narrators, tends to draw the reader into a voyeuristic position. Finally, this issue's Varia section consists of two contributions by Wilfried Roger and François Kral. The first contribution is a linguistic analysis of the deceptively simple coordinator end in Janet Frame's fiction, while the second paper presents us with an A to Z of the diasporic body, which explores the various facets of diasporic theory and critique. Well, I hope you will enjoy this issue and I wish you a very pleasant reading.